Northwestern State finished last year 3-8, and eight, but two of those three wins came in their final three games. Demons closed the year with a 24-20 win at McNeese. First time NSU had won in Lake Charles in 33 years. So they bring momentum into this 2022 season. And head coach Brad Laird, Brad Laird, who enters his fifth year at the helm of his alma mater, has the largest amount of staff turnover in his five seasons. Six new coaches are in Natchitoches for this 2022 campaign. Speaking of Brad Laird, fifth year head man is with us here. Isaiah Longino, a defensive end. We've also got a guy in Giovanni Antonio, talented wide receiver. Great to have all you here. Coach, kick things off. Uh, what's the offseason been like for you? And, and really with all this turnover, what's the transition been like? Yeah, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head. A lot of new. Um, and, and, you know, you talked about the new coaches. And, you know, when you start, um, you know, what an honor it is to represent Northwestern State. Um, you look at a new president uh, in Dr. Marcus Jones, a uh, new athletic director uh, in Kevin Boston. Uh, six of the eight full-time coaches um, are new. Uh, 30 new players uh, that, that are new, new turf, new lights. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a new day, you know. And, and so a lot of excitement, just like it is when, when you have Southland Conference Media Day, it's, it's always exciting because, you know, fall camp's right around the corner. And, and uh, you know, this time of year is, is, uh, is always exciting, but more so because, you know, fall camp's going to be different. You know, there's, uh, there's a lot of competition. Um, you know, one thing that I, that I think anytime your best players are your hardest workers, then you got a chance to be successful. And that's where we are now. And it, it's, uh, you know, it took us longer to get to where we are than what we wanted, uh, but we are there now and look forward to it. We talk about it being the largest turnover in your time as head coach. The six new coaches, you got a couple new, co a couple new uh, uh, coordinators as well. Cody Krill, a guy who comes from UIW, where obviously they had a lot of success, Weston Glazer as well. What's the key to acclimating so many new coaches, knowing that some of their philosophies are a little bit different? Yeah, it has been. You know, anytime you bring in uh, a new system, uh, and, I, and I'll talk offensively first, uh, the opportunity the last four years to coach against Coach Creel, um, the success that they've had at UIW starting on the offensive side of the ball. So there's a lot of familiarity with him and our conference, him and Northwestern State, with Northwestern State and UIW. So um, it is, it's a, schematically it's different. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's almost night and day uh, from what we've done in the past. And with so many new faces, um, even a lot of returners, there's, uh, you know, there's a learning curve, and that's what we're going through now. Defensively, uh, Coach Colosser comes from Campbell, uh, but you got to go back to, to Sam Houston when they went to back to back to back national championship games. Uh, Coach Colosser was on that staff, and, uh, and so he has the familiarity he has with the Southland Conference with Northwestern State. So, you know, you're bringing in um, outside faces, but very familiar. Uh, with the conference and if you look defensively it's going to be totally different you know we uh, schematically uh, things have changed we move guys around to different positions to give them the best opportunity to be successful and so it's uh, it's going to be fun to watch how it all materializes let's go right there to defense Isaiah talking about coach Glosser and, and the mentality he's brought in what's it been like work with him so far and what have you seen from the defense in the offseason uh, it's been great honestly uh, he can't he he did a great job of uh, coming in and um, setting the standard, setting the tone for us, uh, immediately explaining exactly what he needed us to do, uh, what our focuses were. And uh, of course, with the learning curve, we eventually began to, to, to get better throughout the spring. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. What do you see from a year to year improvement standpoint in terms of, in your mind, the biggest things that have to change last year to this year for you guys to be successful on that side of the ball? Uh, I would say hustle, you know, uh, swarm, uh, buy in. You know, we want to play for Glasher. Uh, off, off muscle, we wanted to play for him. The second he came in, he, we immediately bought in. You know, and uh, I think that's going to be a, a big thing. We also have a lot of talent coming this year, uh, as Coach mentioned earlier, and I think both of those things are going to uh, be key to us being great on defense. Speaking of talent, Javon, you guys have certainly have talent on the offensive side, but again, a new coordinator in Cody Krill. What's that been like for you adapting? And, and take me through uh, the offense a little bit, what you've seen so far. Uh, it's real good. I mean, him coming in person the first day he came in, like, hey, we're going to win. That's the first thing he told me. He was like, yeah, I, can't, I came from winning a conference championship. That's what I desired to bring here. He was telling me, like, that's what we're going to do. He's like, confident about it. And I feel that it's great. Like, 
seeing that with everything he's installing in, it's like I see it. It's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, like, then the offensive side of the ball, we got a lot of talent, new faces around, quarterbacks, receivers, o linemen. I just feel like it's going to be a nice season. Great one. For you personally, obviously the fall not playing and then the previous year being an all-conference type guy, what's it going to take now for you to get back to where you've been? We, we know the ability that you have. Um, I've been I've been grinding. I've been training all, all year round. Like just, I took that backseat role, just helping out the guys and letting them like learn the formation and stuff like that. But I've been doing everything I need to do just to get back where I was, mm -hmm. just training. This is really to, to both Javon and you, Coach, as well. That, that number one jersey, I think about in Northwestern State, all the guys, and I guess the latest one, I could be wrong here, Kendrick Price, I think mm -hmm. the last one to wear it. Correct. So many guys going down the line. What, what's that meant over the years and, and just you know, the amount of talent you've had in that, in that wide receiver? Yeah, it's, it's a special number. You know, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, started back with Jazz Ferguson. Mm -hmm. um, that really kick-started it. You know, it, it goes before him, but I think Jazz kind of kick-started it. And, you know, one thing about that, you know, not only is it a good football player uh, that's going to, uh, to to make a lot of plays, it's the work ethic in that number. Um, you know, the, since I've been here, those now the third uh, young man that's worn that jersey, you know, they go out every day uh, on a mission. And, um, you know, it's not just, hey, once I get that number, um, I'm, I'm settled in and, and I've kind of made it. It's not about that. It's, you know, now you're put in a position where you're looked at differently. You know, it's, you know, he, uh, Javon doesn't wear number four. He wears number one, and he's going to be looked at differently. And, and even uh, because of what he had to go through, and both of these young men, I think their stories are unbelievable. That's what college football is about, is stories like this um, that put these young men in position uh, to make a difference. You know, not only amongst the other 110 on our football team, but, but, but those people that look up to them. Javon having to sit out last year, you know, that, that was tough. Learned a lesson. And, uh, you know, those are tough conversations that you have to have of what you have to do in order to get back to where you were. And, and Isaiah, you go back to, to 2019, tearing your ACL. Uh, you're the starting linebacker, and you come back three or four years later, and now you're having to, to move the defensive line. You know, those are, those are things that only happen, um, you know, not, not just in college football, but those stories we can't tell enough. And we got a lot of those stories on this football team that excites me about uh, this group moving forward. You beat me to what I was going to ask Javon about, which is sit, having to sit out last year. What did you learn? I mean, what's the biggest takeaways that you have and now that you can make yourself into a better player and a better man? Uh, basically just staying focused on and off the field. So once I learned that, came back – the year round this year, this year, and uh, I was on honor roll. So mm -hmm. I'm proud of myself for that. Mm -hmm. Isaiah, coach talked about your story as well, the, the torn ACL, the position change, all the time that you've had to wait. Take us through your journey a little bit to get to where you are and, and put in perspective what it's taken for you to now be here as a, one, of the, one of the leaders on this team on the defensive line. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a, a, a crazy journey is, is how I can put it in uh, perspective. It's. Um, I came in that year expecting to be uh, an all-conference type linebacker, and uh, it just didn't work out like that. That's not the plan God had for me, you know. And uh, that was a tough, it, that was a tough break for me in the moment. Uh, I had to, you know, learn how to get through it. Uh, but it, be, it, it made me become a better man. It turned me into a guy that uh, looked at things differently, decided to get really study football rather than take, you know, take it for granted. Kind of, we 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 don't realize how much we do that. Um, and I started to look at things, uh, I, t I took things more seriously. Um, and then turning into a D lineman, um, I don't, I, I can't really explain how that, how, how that happened, how these things happened. You know, it just, I put the effort in, I put the work in, and, and, and I'm, I'm just, I'm here for the ride, you know? I'm just gonna give my effort as, as much as I can throughout every game, and, and whatever guy has in store for me, that's what it is. Coach, well known the uh, career you had at NSU, still the all-time leading passer. We know all your accolades. The quarterback position for you guys since Shelton Epler has been a little up and down. You're trying to find that guy. Take us through that room entering this year, what you're seeing, and, and really which guys are in the mix at the moment. Yeah, we, uh, I'll tell you, we got a good football team. Uh, and, but it's going to come down a lot to that one position. And, um, you know, the way we finished the year last year uh, with, uh, with Zach and Caleb uh, kind of battling out Zach, um, you know, playing more of the reps as we finished up the year. Uh, and then bringing in two guys. We brought in a young man from Kansas and a young man from Jacksonville State to come in and compete because we know the importance of, of that position and how we have to have some consistency amongst 
uh, the football team, and, and a lot of it's going to depend on that position because they're going to be surrounded by good players uh, up front at receiver. Uh, you know, running backs a, a room that that you know we talk about just got depleted last year because of uh, you know injuries uh, with uh, with Scooter Adams, who was all conference. Uh, going back to the spring season and, and played the first three games. Uh, and he was injured in those three games before uh, not playing uh, the rest of the year. So, you know, that position, the quarterback position, is going to be surrounded by good players. It's got to be who's going to be the most consistent, take care of the football, but also make the plays when we need to be, uh, you know, they need to be made in those crucial situations. We talked about your background as a quarterback. In your mind, an effective quarterback playing in Brad Laird's offense and Cody Krill's offense, what does that look like? What does he have to do to be successful? Yeah, and it's it's Cody Krill's. You know, he, he brought in a great system uh, that we're excited. Uh, so it's it's 100% his system and and uh, and, the, and the offensive coaches. But, you know, that's guy, he's going to make great decisions and take care of the football. You know, it's going to be a, a fast pace. Uh, you know, he's going to have to lead the team, the tempo. And so he's going to have to have um, the knowledge to be able to go fast. You know, we can't slow the game down for that position. Whoever it is, we got to go fast, and it's going to be up to that position. Javon, for you as a receiver, moving to this up-tempo style, working with different quarterbacks, biggest adjustment for you, if there is one, adapting to this new offense? Uh, just getting more chemistry since I set out this uh, past season. Getting more chemistry to quarterbacks, really. Everything else is... We're going on a, a faster pace, just like just getting back faster to the line of scrimmage is really about it. Mm -hmm. And having really staying in a lot of shape because you're going to run about at least 60, 60 routes at practice every day. <laughs> yeah, you're getting your cardio in for sure. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there any guys who have uh, stuck out to you so far in the receiving room uh, along with yourself? Uh, Jaron. Jaron, I mean, everybody produces, you know what I'm saying? So, like, everybody has different spurts with what they're showing, just about consistency, who's going to be that guy mm -hmm. and stepping up. But we've been having guys step up lately, so it's going to be it's going to be a lot of talent in the room, mm -hmm. like it's always been. From the same perspective, Isaiah, I think about your guy, you guys defensively. I think you had four all-conference preseason selections. The secondary is really good, coach. I want to ask you about that in a second, but take me through that defensive front and, and what you guys are looking at and what you think is uh, the most exciting part about the personnel you have. Man, we're stacked. That's uh, we have depth. That's the biggest thing. Uh, I mean. First two positions, first two groups on just about every position in the D line is, you know, I, I feel like could be a starter, and uh, that that just excites us, you know. Sixth for you in, in Demons history in terms of sacks. You got a lot of guys, coach, who have been successful in the secondary picking off pass. And I think about Shamar Bartholomew and, and the ability he's had. He's up to one of the all-time leaders now in, in school history. It take me through him and some of the other guys you, you think in the secondary that have stuck out. Yeah, I think when you look at us defensively as a whole, I think the biggest thing is going to be depth, finding depth at linebacker and the back end. Um, you know, you look at corner, uh, Shamar, uh, who you've talked about, has, has gotten a, a lot of uh, play over the last couple of years, uh, William Hooper. Uh, and Cedric Anderson, you know, those three guys, along with Trey Williams, have, have really played a lot uh, on the island. Uh, and safety-wise, with, with P.J. coming back as a preseason all-conference, you know, he was hurt, missed, uh, I believe, the last two games of the year last year, along with Keenan Leachman. Uh, you know, so, so those guys, again, have a lot of uh, – knowledge of what it takes to be successful in the Southland Conference. It's finding depth uh, to, uh, to go along with the guys that we have defensively. We sometimes neglect the special teams, too, but to have an all-conference punter like Scotty Robb, a little guy like Eddie Godina, who's done it at the highest level, he's kicked game-winning field goes for you, that has to be reassuring as well to have those guys back. It is. You know, and, and before I leave defensively, you know, one guy we kind of fail to talk about, he's in a position move, is, is Joe Mard Valson. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Mard was an outside linebacker for us last year. As schematically we've changed, um, you know, he's uh, kind of the opposite of uh, Longino as far as the defensive end, the beast position. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that position is going to play a, a big key to our success defensively. And what, you know, to have a better guy than him, of uh, the success he's had over the last couple of years. And, and then moving into special teams, you know, that's, that's going to change. Schematically, things are going to change uh, in all phases, special teams-wise. But when you have Scotty Roblo and what he was able to do as a punter, uh, changing the field, field position is, is, is huge uh, in this game. And then Eddie, uh, not only as, uh, you know, what he's done as a, as a field goal, but also kickoff. So, you know, the biggest thing is, is uh, you know, finding guys, um, that complement them special team-wise and then finding the deep snapper. 
If uh, anyone has questions, we'll open up Q&A now as well. Just uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll get you a mic. I think we got one in the back over here. I don't know if we have a mic available. Just state your name and affiliation. Ashley Elam, KBMT Beaumont. Uh, Coach, uh, we cover Lamar and, you know, it was a last minute ad. You know, while it does add stability, it caused you to lose a rivalry game against McNeese. And, you know, how tough is that to, to lose a game on a schedule that you look forward to that late in the process? Yeah, to be honest, it was tough, you know. Um, I, I don't think any of us uh, besides Bruce in the back realize what that room was like uh, when you add UIW and you add Lamar to, to, to the scheduling, you know. Um, but, you know, we talk about the Southland Conference, and here we are 60 years with the Southland Conference. Uh, you look at Northwestern State and McNeese, you go back to 1951. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, that's a long time those two teams have been playing. And, you know, understand, yeah, we did play three times in eight months. Um, you know, but that doesn't really take away and, and because we did that, allow us not to play. But you know what? It's, uh, we understand uh, the scheduling conflicts. And you know, we're just happy uh, to have the opportunity to have this discussion. Because if we weren't having this discussion, UIW and Lamar wouldn't be in the picture. So you know, it's, it, I think it's good to have these conversations. And, and those are tough conversations. But you know what? We get it. We understand. We're going to play the guys that they put in front of us and, and excited to do so. And we got one in the back corner here. Elijah Nixon with KOB. Um, Coach Laird, you've been in this conference for about five years now. You've seen teams in and out, but you see this one's getting stronger and stronger. Just talk about the growth of this Southland um, conference. The, the, the growth of the conference is, man, you talk about uh, eight head coaches, uh, quality head coaches that, that, that are great leading men um, and, and great players in this conference. You know, we had a uh, a head coaches meeting yesterday and, and uh, you know, some of us that have been in the conference, um, you know, whether it's been the last eight or nine years or the last four or five years or those that are new, um, you know, we, we had great conversation uh, that, uh, that I think helps build this conference. But, but, but week in and week out, I, I think the preseason all conference came out today and, and Coach Selfo will probably be the first one to tell you that, that you can throw those out the window. Um, but I think that just shows you the strength of this conference. Um, but week in and week out, the opportunity to be successful is going to be there. Coach, he was asking a little bit about uh, scheduling and obviously bringing Lamar back and whatnot. Let's look at the schedule a little bit because, you know, most Louisiana teams we've talked to today, they're going to Louisiana Tech, Lafayette. You guys are going to Montana. That's not an easy place to go to for week one, a perennial contender for national championships. Uh, take me through the start of that schedule and then also playing three or first four away from home. Excited about, about week one, you know, the opportunity for us because we want to make that trip in December. Or, or play those type of teams in December, and that's why we're doing it in September. Um, you know, to, to be able to get on a plane and, uh, you know, a team that, that finished sixth last year and, and, and is going to be top ten this year, that's where we want to be. And so in order to get there, you got to play those caliber of football teams. And, and uh, you know, I think if, if we didn't have belief in this football team being able to compete with the likes of Montana, we wouldn't go there. But, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to that. And then week two, uh, to be able to uh, play an in-state school in Gramlin, uh, in Shreveport, I think is, uh, is great uh, for both schools, for both universities. Uh, and then week three, uh, to be able to play Southern Miss. So, you know, right out the gate, we're going to find out a lot about our football team. And, uh, and, and I think that's going to be a key for us. If you look back over the last four or five years, you know, we've had some success later in the seasons, but we have not started fast. And that's something that we got to do this season. To both of you, how do you start fast then? Uh, are you going to a tough place to play like we were talking about with Coach starting out? What's going to be the key for you guys to be ready starting week one? Uh, just we got to come in focused, come in ready, come in uh, hot like we've been. So uh, it's going to take fall camp, you know, competing in fall camp every day. Uh, we, are, we had a great start in June with, you know, workouts. We've been working very hard every day. Uh, we brought that into July. We got the momentum going into fall camp, and we're just going to keep that momentum going try to keep that going throughout the season. Just like he said, when fall camp starts, you got to be locked in. Everybody has to show up on time, stuff like that. Just be locked in where, whatever we're doing, basically. And that's going to lead into the season. Coach, we were uh, chatting about this earlier, and, and obviously some, some people have asked about this too, but uh, just your thoughts on, on general realignment right now in college football. Um, 
of course, you add a, a school like Commerce to here and Lamar coming back in, great for the conference. But it's just your take on college football in general and the way that conferences are shaping out. Yeah, and, and you see a lot of a lot of things that are that have shaken out and, and will continue to do so. Uh, I think that's why, you know, Chris and Bruce, Chris Grant and, and Bruce Ludlow, uh, the, them getting enough credit to be able to have our conference. Because if you look eight months ago, um, you know, the, the, the things that were out there about the Southland Conference uh, may not have been very positive. But that core group, I think, stuck together, and it showed what this conference is about. It's, uh, it's about sticking together. It's about guys that are being tough, head coaches that are tough, uh, the, the student athletes that are tough. You know, Byron Boston, he, I think he, he, he stepped out. But, you know, 19 years ago, I think that – uh, he started and, and what he started with the, with the officials and where it is now, I think you start, you're starting to see that at other conferences. And, and that started here in the Southland Conference. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a group that is able to get through tough times and, and mentally and physically tough to be able to get through those times. And you're seeing the rewards, the benefits of what's happened over the last 60 years. It's an interesting dynamic we have now, Coach, too, because, you know, your guy's been here five years you got now a Tim Rebo who's been around for eight years, a guy like Frank Selfo, it's five, it's nine now for Vic Sheely. It's been fascinating to watch the development and just the way that things have adapted in this conference, obviously for the better now. It is. And, you know, those are, those are guys that you mentioned that, uh, you know, that are, that are good friends Monday through Friday and Saturday nights. You want to kick their butt. You know, I mean, that's just that's, that's the way it is. And I figured by game week you want to kick their butt. Well, that's, we'll, we'll at least <laughs> wait till Saturday. But, um, but it, it is. It, it's a good group that – you know, is able to have those conversations of what makes this conference the best that it can be. You know, it's, it's um, you know, sometimes you, it's not somebody saying what you want to hear. It's, it's the truth. And, uh, and I think that's what the core group of these coaches, when you talk about Tim and you talk about Vic and you talk about Frank and what those guys have done. And uh, it's just, it's made this conference to me um, the elite conference in FCS. To uh, both of you, final thing, what, what's been the best part of uh, playing for a coach here? Uh, just anything you've, you've learned or grown, you know, the way you've grown along the way? Oh, man. <laughs> coach has done so much for me. I yeah. can't even explain it, man. Uh, definitely a guy I plan on having in my life, you know, for, for, for a lifelong thing, you know. It taught me how to be a man in a lot of ways. And, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's been it. On the field, it's great, you know, but off the field, he's a really good guy. Yeah. Basically, I can feed off what he said. He's a great guy to be on your side. Like, when I was going through some things, he was right by my side. Let me know I'm here for you every day. Then on the, on the other side of football, he brings the energy that we need before the game, every every single game. He's piping, uh, he's uh, pumping it up in the locker room every single game. Like, that's mm -hmm. Coach Larry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't ask any embarrassing stuff, so uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, man. Well, hey, I, I appreciate your time, guys. Best of luck this year. Welcome back for sure, Javon, and uh, yeah, have, have a great year, Isaiah. Appreciate, uh, sure. appreciate you taking the time, Coach. Best of luck against Montana week one. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. All right. Sure. Appreciate it. Up next, Lamar will have uh, head coach Blaine Morgan. Lamar making their return to the Southland Conference. We'll also be joined by Jalen Dumay and Jack McCarthy. Cardinals are on deck. We roll along here with Southland Conference Media Day, powered by 5v1.com.